My name is Robin Graham, and I'm here with my friend and business partner, Chris Ledoux. Um, we own and operate uh, Redmond.ai. So we are a cloud hosting provider specializing in um, high-end uh, AI training workloads. So we have A100, 80 gig GPUs. We have a bunch of those servers. We have some of the fastest disaggregated NVMe storage you can get, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, very exciting. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, feel free to talk to me or Chris after the talk, or we're at booth 713, and we do have servers available now if anyone's looking for something. Um, and while cloud hosting is super exciting, I know everyone wants to talk about GPUs and stuff, um, I kind of wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about something else. Uh, so before Redmond, uh, Chris and I actually owned and operated a somewhat large visual effects company called Crafty Apes. Uh, we've been in the uh, movie industry for, I was 20 years, something like that, so a very long time. Worked on hundreds of, uh, hundreds of projects, and um, so it's something we know a lot about. Um, we've been in the AI space in film and TV for, I mean, myself, you know, maybe six or seven years. Um, so we have a lot of experience in it and kind of want to go into a little bit about the proliferation of AI and Hollywood and kind of some of the backlash you're seeing. Um, the very, you know, it's all over the news right now. Um, so we can kind of talk a little bit about that and what that means. Um, we'll be kind of discussing a, a different part of using AI in, um, in the film and TV industry. So. Um, right now, if you guys aren't aware, the uh, Screen Actors Guild, the uh, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, and the Writers Guild are all currently on strike. This is the first time this has happened simultaneously since 1960, so it's kind of a big deal. And why is the industry so shook up about AI, right? What are the main sticking points? Um, you can see that it's not an AI-generated image over there that is hand drawn by me. Um, but there's four kind of major sticking points, right? So obviously a big one, job security and compensation. If you can have an AI model write a script in you know, five minutes, you know, what are the use of writers? That's a big fear a lot of people have. Um, usage of actors likeness. So this is actually really interesting. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but um, the uh, SAG chief, uh, chief negotiator alleged that the American Picture Film uh, Committee proposed that for a day rate, essentially a day rate of an extra, that they could be scanned and their uh, 3D, you know, their likeness, their full 3D body, probably their voice can be used in perpetuity for just a single day rate, right? So this is... Um, very scary <laughs> for a lot of people in the industry, right? Because they think you're gonna scan my image, you're just gonna use it forever, and I get what, like 500 bucks or something? Is that like a day rate these days? Uh, not that great. So uh, by the way, we've been replacing background <laughs> crowds in CG for decades now, so. But it's becoming, you know, it's becoming a part of the public consciousness that people are thinking about. Um, another big sticking point, and this kind of goes to job security, is the uh, undermining union solidarity. Again, if you have a bank of computers doing the work of you know, a few people, now your union doesn't have as many people, it's not gonna be as strong, people aren't gonna have the, uh, the negotiation power that they used to have. Um, and probably the, one of the bigger sticking points is the public perception, right? No one likes the idea of someone building an AI model and going in and, like I said, writing scripts or, you know, taking away uh, work from voice actors, taking away work from, uh, from background extras, something like that. Um, but we're not really going to talk about right now about replacing writers or replacing actors. Um, I think, you know, that will work its, its way out over time. Um, but what we're going to talk a little bit about is how can AI help behind the scenes? So this is in the pre-production, uh, post-production stage. Um, we're not talking about replacing creative roles. We're talking about 
be, being, being able to organize and, and produce films at a much more uh, efficient uh, scale, being able to uh, really plan and completely, completely envision the film before you actually end up shooting it. So I'd like to bring up Chris, my partner up here. He can talk a little bit about that. Hello. So basically, what we came up with is very simple. The, as Robin said, we'll let the philosophers figure out about generative stories and who's going to uh, motivate the, those ideas, which, you know, personally, I think that without humanity behind something, it has no meaning. So I'm not really worried about the thought behind the script. What we're interested in is in the execution of the script. And because after many, after being on hundreds of sets, what you observed is there was this strange thing that would happen in when people make a movie, which is they don't exactly plan what they're doing, which if you've ever been on set a lot, you see this bizarre thing. It seems like planning, but what happens is, is you have a script and a producer, estimator analyzes it. Maybe we do storyboards, maybe pre -vis, but really we just go out and shoot a whole bunch of shit. And then we come back and then I'm come from the, I started a whole company that saw this irrationality and I was like, you can make a lot of money off of inefficiency. So in visual effects, that's what we did because if you've ever heard the term, we'll fix it in post, that means they didn't plan it in prep. And so where we became really interested was how could we solve this? Because visual effects is one of the only departments that's there start to finish. So we'd be there with these poor directors playing the telephone game. And at the start of the movie, they're so hopeful and they're so excited and they have this vision for what's gonna happen. And by the end of it, they're, uh, they're dead inside. And, and so, like, how can we help get their vision up there? And so, what happens is, is we realize that the, um, we looked at budgets, but I'm gonna go to this luminaire. So, we came up with a basic philosophy, which is very an old philosophy from Hitchcock, which is we're gonna make the movie in prep. We're, we've taken large language models, married them to game engines, and uh, we've measured editorial thing, uh, cut lengths, like cinemetri called cinematrics, so cut cadences, motivations for cuts behind certain genres. A dumb example is establishing shot over, over. So you can, if you read a script into our language model, it will create in the game engine the entire movie for you in previs. Voices underscore everything. And here's why that's helpful. So there's something psychologically that happens that when you read a script in your head, you go, well, that's, that's great. I think that's awesome. Now, how do you end up with movies where it's like, wait, so the aliens travel to this planet that's covered in water and it's deadly to them? I don't know. You know, so a lot of stuff doesn't get revealed in the script stage. Humans and surprisingly, a lot of directors are not very good at visualizing things, which seems like an odd job for them to do as directors. But the first thing the previs is going to do, Luminaire, it's going to allow the director to visualize their whole movie creatively. Now they can watch the movie over and over. They can iterate, adjust the script, adjust the cut cadence, because all it's done is build the initial. The director is going to have complete power over this. They can adjust the entire movie. Once that's done, they will have a finished pre-visualization movie. Creatively, that's going to open them way up because now they can find new stories to tell. They can see what works, what doesn't, you know, likenesses, voices. They can adjust everything. They can get the thing tight. Logistically, why we think this is important with the strikes going on is, in my opinion, the strikes are not what it appears to be. This is a debt crisis issue. And when they financed all these things last year for streaming, they forgot about the whole, like, hey, we got to make money off this. So actually finding a way to make things, things for far cheaper is tantamount. So once you have this, what do you have? Well, you now have a blueprint that has complete attributes to tell the crew and the department heads how to shoot it. It's a shared vision. Because what happens on set is you end up with these large silos of departments and nobody knows what they're doing. Ed editors don't even start until after the movie gets shot half the time. <clears throat> None of it makes a lot of sense. So there's a shared vision that the crew is going to have to have. You don't need to overshoot anything. Every frame on the, on the cutting room floor is technically a waste. So instead of all these extra shooting days, you can cut these way down. You can run through optimization algorithms to tell you the fastest way to shoot this thing. In addition to that, we've hooked it up to a database where you can now look at every scene and know what you need in that scene. How many props people you'll need, how many makeup people you'll need, 
based on tiers, because there's usually tiers to movies for a budget level. And in geography, you can look at tax credit, exchange rate, and local crew cost to analyze how much that movie should cost. And how much do you want to spend on it, depending on how much you want to spend above the line. And if you're not in film, above the line is the actors, producers, um, fancy people, we call them. That's where all the money goes, usually. So you can measure all these things and make an optimized choice on the film. So now that you have a finished film before you've even shot it, you can now act like every other industry in the world and actually plan something and go, that's what we're going to go to shoot. And everyone goes, oh, that's great. Because right now what happens is we go shoot it and then everyone waits and goes and watches it and goes, oh man, that doesn't make any sense. Let's go reshoot. And so this, uh, this takes care of the process. So we have some other modules we built, script scout, uh, scene mapper that are, uh, you know, in addition to Luminaire to do all this analysis. But yeah, that's our basic theory is um, simply make the movie before you make the movie is my catchphrase. So thank you.